A few weeks ago, I started working on my first SaaS product, which is going to be a challenge platform for developers. On the front end, I'm using Nux3, and for the back end to keep things simple for myself, I opted to use Supabase. For those unaware, Supabase is an open source backend as a service that provides you with a set of tools to build scalable applications. It's been a breeze to work with and as a front end developer, it's helped me be able to get my products back end built quickly and allow me more time to focus on the front end. Now often when looking to build an application, authentication can feel quite daunting for developers. However, with Supabase, it's super easy and can be actually set up within your application in only a matter of minutes. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I implemented Supabase authentication into my SaaS product using Nux3, and this includes signing up a user, signing in and signing out a user, detecting if a user is signed in, and lastly, protecting authenticated routes using some custom middleware. To get started, we're going to create a new Nux3 application. Once that's finished, we'll want to cd into this new folder and install the project dependencies. And for this video, I'm also going to be using the Tailwind CSS module. With the Nux3 application set up, let's create a new Supabase project. If you don't have an account, you can create one or you can opt to use your GitHub account. Now, once you created your account or signed in, we'll start by creating a new project. We're just going to call this Nux3 plus auth, and then for the database password, we'll use the option to generate a password for us. We're going to leave the region as the pre-selected option and keep it on the free plan and click on create new project. Once that's set up, we'll be taken back to the dashboard for our Supabase project. So back here inside of our Nux3 application, we'll need to connect the Supabase project to our application. And luckily Nux has a module that makes this integration extremely easy. First, we're going to need to install this module into our application. Once that's complete, we need to add this module to the Nux config. And lastly, we're gonna to need to create two environment variables. And since we don't have an env file inside of our project, we can easily create one by using the command touch.env inside of the integrated terminal. Then inside of this env file, we need to add our two environment variables, one called supabase underscore URL, and the other one called supabase underscore key. For the value of these variables, we can head back over to our supabase project, and we wanna click on this settings gear inside of the navigation. We're going to be using this project URL for the supabase underscore URL variable, and then the first value within the project API key section for the supabase underscore key variable. And now that we have that added, if you do have your Nux server running, you're gonna to wanna to restart that, and then Supabase will have been integrated and ready to use inside of our Nux application. Now to speed things up, I went ahead and created a few pages that we're gonna be using here within this video. So let's start by looking how we can register or create a user. Now in this file, I've went ahead and created a few variables. The first two are going to be to capture the input from our inputs for the email and password. And then these bottom two are going to be for handling invalid and successful attempts to Supabase. And we also have an empty function called sign up, which we're going to be using to make our request to Supabase. And this function is going to be executed every time that we click submit within our form. Now, the first thing we need to do to sign up a user is we need to gain access to the Supabase client within this file. And to do this, we can actually use a composable that's available to us in this module called use Supabase auth client. And what this composable does is it gives us access to all the available methods from Supabase to handle authentication. And we're gonna store this composable in a new variable called clients. So inside of this function, we're going to create what is called a try catch block. Inside of the try block, we're going to reference our client variable, which is set equal to this composable called use supabase auth client. And on here, we have access to a property called auth. And on this auth property, we have available to us a few methods. And the method we're going to be using is called sign up. Now this method accepts an object with a few properties for signing up our users. So the properties it accepts is gonna be the email, which we'll set equal to our email variable. And then it accepts a password property, which we're gonna set equal to our password variable. Now once this function executes, it's going to return back data and then errors if any are present. And if we wanted to access that data or the errors, what we could do is set this function equal to a new variable and then reference it accordingly. However, to make things a little bit cleaner, we can actually destructure the response that we get back from Supabase. So what we can say is we can create a new variable and then we can destructure the data and the errors from the response. Now, since this function will take some time to execute, we're gonna wanna wait for it to finish before continuing on. 
Now, since we're using the async keyword here in front of our function, we can just use the await keyword in front of here to await for this function to finish before continuing on. So after this function finishes, we're going to want to check to see if we have any errors being returned from Superbase. So what we'll do is an if check to see if we have any errors being returned from Superbase. So we're going to say if we have an error, then we want to throw that error and then it's going to be caught here inside of this try catch block. And what we want to do is we're going to then take our error message variable and we're going to set it equal to the error message being returned from Superbase. Now, if we don't have any errors being returned from Superbase, then what we want to do is we want to set our success message variable here, which is going to say check your email to confirm your account. And one thing we do need to fix here, so when we destructured our response from Superbase, it should not be errors, it should just be error. So this is actually all the functionality that we're going to need in order to sign up a user from our application to Superbase. So let's test this out. So we have the application running here on port 3000, so let's give this a go. So let's just put an email here, we'll say test.yahoo.com. And if we forget to put the password in here and we click on register, then as you can see, we're going to get spit out a message here from Superbase saying sign up requires a valid password. Then for example, if we leave out the email and we just put in a password, then we should get back a different response and you can see it's going to say to sign up, please provide your email. So I do think this is pretty cool that Superbase provides us with this information so that way we can properly inform the users of what exactly the issue is. And the best part about this is we don't have to worry about writing any of this logic. We can just grab it from Superbase and we can display it accordingly here inside of our UI. So now that we've seen that, let's actually create our account. So we'll use my email of john at johncormernicki.com and we'll just give ourselves a password here and then let's just click on register. And as you can see, we were able to successfully go ahead and create our account. We got our success message, but one issue that we do have is that we still see our error message. So what we could do is every time that we run our function, we could clear out the error and also success message. And on the network tab for our successful sign of function, this is what Superbase went ahead and returned to us. And back here inside of our Superbase project underneath the authentication tab, we can see that newly registered user that we just went ahead and created. So now that we have the ability to register a user, let's see how we can log in a user. And for this, I already have a page created called login, and we have a few things already defined in here. So we have this variable called router, which we're gonna be using to redirect the user once they have logged in. Then we have these two variables here, one for the email and then one for the password. And then we have this variable for our error message to handle any invalid attempts that we may have from Superbase. And lastly, we have a function called sign in, which we'll use to make our request. And this function will be executed each time that we hear the submit event on our form. So again, in this file to get started, we're going to need to import the Superbase client. So for this, we're going to use that composable we use in our register file called use Superbase auth client. And we'll set this equal to a new variable called clients. And for this function, it's going to look pretty identical to the one we wrote for registering a user. So let's begin by creating a try catch block. And within the try block, we're gonna create a new variable and we're gonna destructure the response to get back from Superbase. But for this sign in function, we're only going to be destructuring the error that we get back from Superbase. And we'll set this equal to await and then we'll reference our client. Then we'll use that auth property and this time we're gonna use a method called sign in with password. And this method also accepts an object and we're gonna pass it to properties. We're gonna pass it the email and then we're gonna pass it the password. And if we do encounter an error, what we're gonna do is the same thing. We're gonna do an if check to see if the error exists. And if it does, we're gonna throw that error we get back from Superbase. And then we'll handle that here inside of our catch block. So within this catch block, we're going to reference our error message dot value. And then we're gonna set it equal to the error dot message we get back from Superbase. And lastly, if we don't encounter any errors, then we're going to use our router and then we're going to use the push method and then we're going to direct them to a page I created called profile. So back here in our application, let's test this out. So if we attempt to log in with an account that doesn't exist, so we'll just say test yahoo.com and we'll just do a fake password. And if we click sign in, then obviously that account doesn't exist and we're going to get an error message back saying invalid login credentials. So now if we use the account that we went ahead and registered with, which was this john at johncormernicki.com, and I did go ahead and verify this, and then we enter the password that we did, we should then get redirected to the profile page, which we do. Okay, so now that we're able to log into our account, we want to be able to detect in the application if a user is currently logged in. So within the profile page, we can use another composable from this module called useSuperbaseUser. 
And what this composable does is it gives us access to the currently logged in user. And if there is no user logged in, then this value will return null. So what we'll do is we'll store this composable in a variable called user. And to show you what this returns, we can log out to the console, this user.value. So if we save this and head over to the application, then you can see in the console, we're going to get all this information about the currently logged in user. And then here inside of the template, what we can do is access this user to display certain information about the current logged in user. So for example, we can display the current email of the logged in user. And here in the application, you can see the email of the currently logged in user. All right, so now that we have the ability to register a user, log in a user, and detect if a user is currently logged in, we also want to be able to let the user log out of their account. Now to do this, the first thing we'll need is our Supabase client. So what we'll do is use our composable of use Supabase auth client, and then we'll store it here in a variable called client. And in this function of log out, what we'll do is we'll define a new try catch block. And inside of the try block, we're going to create a new variable and to structure the response we get from Supabase. But again, this time we're only going to be structuring the error. And then we'll set this equal to, and we'll use a keyword await, and then we'll reference our client variable, the auth property, and then a method on here called sign out. And if we have any errors from Supabase, we'll do the same thing we've done before is we're going to check if that error exists. And if it does, we're going to throw that error and then we'll handle it within our catch block. And for this example, what we're going to do is just log out of the console, the error, that message that we might get if we do encounter an error. And if we don't encounter any errors and we're able to sign out successfully, then what we're going to do is redirect the user back to the login page. And back within the application, if we click on the log out button, we should be logged out and then we'll be redirected back to our login page. Now, the last thing I want to cover in this video is protecting your authenticator routes. So what I mean by that is, for example, in this demo, we have that profile page that we created, which is essentially only for authenticated users. So if a user is not signed in, then we wouldn't want them to be able to hit that page. But currently, if we were to go to this page, so if we say slash profile, we can obviously go ahead and hit this page, but we're not going to be seeing our email being displayed since we don't have a user currently logged in. Now, ideally, we want to restrict users from ever being able to reach this page, and we can easily set this up using some custom middleware within Nuxt. And for those unaware of what middleware is, simply it's going to be some logic that is going to run before reaching that particular route. And what we can do is we can check to see if the user is authenticated or not before reaching this route. And if they are, let them through. And if they are not authenticated, then we can redirect them back to somewhere else within our application. So back here inside of our Nux application, what we first want to do is you want to create a new folder and this will be called middleware. And then within this middleware folder, we're going to create a new file and we'll call this auth.js. Now within this file, we're going to start by exporting this helper function that's available to us by Nux called the find route middleware. And this goes ahead and accepts a callback function. And within this function, we first want to get reference to if a user is currently logged in. So to do this, we're going to use our composable of use superbase user, and then we'll store that in a variable called user. Then what we'll do is we're going to check to see if this user value is null, meaning they're not logged in. And if they're not logged in, then what we want to do is we'll say return. And then we're going to navigate the user back to the login page and back inside of our profile page to use the middleware we just created. We first need to use what is called the define page meta macro. And then within here, we can then define something called middleware and pass it a array. And then we can reference the name that we gave our middleware, which was called auth. And now each time that we try to get to this page, this middleware function of auth is going to be run and it's going to check to see if the user is currently logged in. And if they're not logged in, then it's going to redirect them back to the login page. Now for this to work properly, you're also going to want to stop and then restart your NUC server. So we can just hit control C here to stop this and then we can rerun it with npm run dev. And now back within the application, if we attempt to go to the profile page and we're not logged in, we're just going to get simply redirected back to our login page. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this video on how to add Supabase authentication into your Nux3 app. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it down below. And if you are new here, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.